a small um, lesion within the breast. They're the words that one in seven women will hear at some point during their lifetime. And of all the tools doctors are using to help women survive and go on and lead long, productive lives, genetic testing is making its way to the forefront, especially in women of Eastern European descent. We would consider that someone we would want to test um, for a BRCA1 or 2 gene mutation. Only a small number of women carry the hereditary Burka gene mutation. But as women learn more about it, more are coming forward asking if they could possibly be carriers. Women like Kathy Montgomery. So I thought breast cancer was breast cancer. I didn't know that there were different kinds. Kathy's life passion is pet therapy volunteering, and she knows how important it is to have as many tools as possible in your toolbox when your health takes an unexpected turn. We take dogs in to work with patients uh, in the hospitals and at senior centers with the seniors. When cancer showed up on her mammogram, Kathy rallied her doctor's support as she chose to have a lumpectomy. We were under the impression that um, uh, I was fine and uh, I would even be able to dodge chemo and maybe just a little radiation. But during Kathy's treatment, something about her heritage caused Dr. Lisa Gerges's radar to light up. As a surgical oncologist, Dr. Gerges keeps a close eye out for women who have any history of breast or ovarian cancer in their family. This link between breast and ovarian cancer is very real and extremely important to remember when counseling and evaluating a patient who may appear to have a genetic susceptibility or an inherited risk for the development of either of these uh, diseases. My mother had had ovarian cancer and had gone through chemo and she had passed away from ovarian cancer. To Dr. Gerges, this aspect of Kathy's history stood out like a neon warning sign, especially when she looked at Kathy's genetic descent. More specifically, of Eastern European or of specifically Ashkenazi Jewish descent, for instance. These women are known to have a much higher incidence um, for the development of hereditary breast cancer. Based on these criteria, Dr. Gerges offered Kathy a blood test to see if she carried the Burka mutation. Kathy accepted. Her test came back positive. So now the whole picture is changing. Kathy's mind spun. This meant she was genetically predisposed to a highly aggressive form of hereditary breast cancer and also at high risk for ovarian cancer, all revealed in one simple test. It's not for everyone and it comes with baggage. It comes with potentially uh, burdens to shoulder. It was a highly emotional experience, but as the discussion turned to prevention, Kathy partnered with a team of doctors, genetic counselors, and therapists who played a crucial role in putting everything into perspective given her age and her lifestyle. Kathy's choice? A double mastectomy, ovary removal, and a total hysterectomy all done for the purpose of prevention. There was no question for me, there was no discussion, there was no coaxing, and uh, she said, I think you're making the right decision. That was five years ago. Today, while Kathy lives under careful surveillance in the form of frequent clinical breast exams, mammography, and MRIs, her tests show no presence of cancer. <laughs> wow! The one reason why I love what I do is because women live um, who have breast cancer. Eight million survivors isn't a small number. The experience can be intense for women who opt for genetic testing, but there's also new hope as those who make that choice learn that they are in turn contributing to a growing pool of knowledge that's saving more women's lives every day. How do you get to be so cute? Huh? How did you get to be so cute? Ask the doctor, am I a candidate for it? Bring the subject up. Not everybody is gonna do what I did. I had to have a lot of input from the doctor because I didn't know anything about any of this. Um, uh, but it gives me the choice.